Glenn. Hey. Hey there. Uh, Hi. Move to open the meeting at 7.08. Second. Okay, moved and second to open the meeting. So we got to do roll call. Fred. Aye. Stephanie. Present. Terry. Aye. Mike, yes. Okay. So what we will do is tackle <coughs> the other items between now and 7.30. And we probably will get through most of these things, maybe except one. All right, let's go. All right. So um, let's look at the approval of the June 8th, 22 minutes. Any input on that? Move to accept the minutes. Second. All right, moved and seconded. Let's see if there's any discussion on that. No, pretty good minutes. Mm -hmm. Amazing, actually. Spell checker is a good friend. <laughs> Not always. Well, that's true. <laughs> I had a question, though, Annie. Yeah. Um, on here we have annual appointments, but we talked about that. That's we sure did. I messed that okay, up. Okay, so that's in the minutes. You got that in the minutes? From last, yeah, so from last meeting, yeah. yeah no, I right. just forgot to delete it from okay, these minutes, good. or this agenda. I just didn't know if they didn't get in there for some reason. Oh, or no, something. I screwed up. No. Better to screw up on the agenda than the minutes. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> All right. to accept the agenda. All in favor of accepting <laughs> the minutes... Are we doing roll call? Um, yes, we have to on everything. Um, Fred. Aye. Uh, Stephanie. Aye. Terry. Aye. Mike, yes. Okay, unanimous. All right, the next one, skipping down to number five is X. Um, skipping down to continue our let's this is a continuation of our prior discussion on the Washington Street parking at BZ Park oh, issue yeah. okay so um, Stephanie you were updating us about oh some yes comments from the friends the of BZ Park. friends of BZ um, discussion today they have some issues I mean they actually would be fine with hay bales I just don't know if they'd be fine with boulders Oh well, what I meant was we put bowl, we put hay bales in front of the boulders. Yeah, yeah. And the boulders like we did in front of the trees. Yeah. And the boulders are to inhibit all parking or parking at only inhibit people from driving onto the grass. So just in that particular area by the path that goes. Yeah, it's about a hundred feet. So it will require 11 or 12 boulders, two foot, two to two foot, two to three foot boulders. Yeah, I wonder if we could um, somehow have a joint meeting with, or maybe we. A joint meeting with who? Well, that's the thing is, I guess I'm an intermediary, but they're really not happy with the boulder idea. They think that's not going to be um, aesthetically pleasing. Okay, so are they willing to then instead uh, pay for a fence to be put up? How about if I send that as an email and see what people say? Uh, they're not going to do that. They don't have the money. We're talking a fence. A we got some fence donated to the Native Garden. A decent looking fence. It doesn't put itself up. Pretty expensive. Um, see, my concern, my, my feeling is this. The Friends of VZ, it's not necessarily their job to be concerned about the conservation value of the property itself. No, but considering it's a wedding venue... And yeah. Photos. Nobody knows down there for a wedding, are they? At the bottom of the hill? It's a gorgeous, gorgeous hill with that tree is the prettiest tree in the state. And what? I don't know what boulders are going to do to the view. <laughs> prettiest tree in the state. It's beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to have to take a look. You better. <laughs> Come up I've to the Native been, Garden. I'll give I've, you a tour. I've only been driving by it for 26 years. All right. This I don't know if you looked at the bottom of the it. hill. It's the prettiest tree in the, in the no, state. No, it's not at the bottom of the hill. It's beautiful oak in the middle. Up the exactly. 
you you were so near if you're taking photographs that you're not going to see stones at the bottom of maybe the we hill. should have a field trip hey site visit yeah we can do that let's do a site visit and we'll invite diane and vanessa sure and whoever else wants sure. to come sure probably vinnie sure okay i love it and when are we proposing the site visit saturday no, uh, i am here. free saturday i'm not here i can be there okay if you want do you want us to facetime you no <laughs> Do you have an alternate date? Do you want to be there, Terry? Um, I don't think I need to be. Okay. okay, well, let's do it Saturday. What time? Yeah, get it over with. 9 a.m.? 8.30? Yeah. 8.30 sound good? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Moving along then. Um, let's see. Can we do number one yet? Okay. Oh yeah. All right. So, number one is the is we we're having a resident from Three Oakland Terrace who wants to install a basketball court on the rear of his property and wants to just have an informal discussion with us about our thoughts on it. Yes. They emailed me about like 15 minutes ago and they're not going to be able to make it. <laughs> Um, so they would like to be put on the next agenda, but basically just so you have a bit to think about it. Um, so here's the proposed house they're looking at right here, which would put them outside of the 100 foot buffer zone. Um, the issue with right here is that it would require a decent amount of grading. Um, so they're also looking at back here, which would require less grading, but is within the buffer zone and would also require a lot of clearing. They're looking at using a permeable pavement for the court. Um, but again, they're not here to give more details, so there's not really much else. But So they'll be here next week to talk about it. What or kind of next month. I'm sounds sorry. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. That's... Hmm. Hmm. They, don't, they just don't want to file an RDA? I think Before they, wanna... they start going down the route of pulling out contractors and putting a plan together, they want to talk with the commission first. Because if they do it here, they're not going to need to file anything. Yeah, I, I suggest they do it there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know, that's what I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know which one this is? No. It, the one with the problems there that sloped down when they were building it. And, and, you know, we took that walk off of Washington Street. That's where this Lane. is? Yeah, that's that house. That's that last lot. Oh. I All believe. Right. Well, let's deal with the next, next meeting. Right, okay. right, Annie? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, even within, outside the 100-foot buffer, I'm not exactly happy with the way that backyard was built. So. Mm -hmm. Well, Maybe I think that's beyond the scope of this. Well, I don't know. I'm just saying that you know we should take that prior stuff into consideration when when we're going to actually grant it or not. You know. Well, if it's outside of our jurisdiction, it really doesn't. Well, no, right. But but if they've got something that that you find objectionable. Well, what my my thought is that. You know, if we could come to some compromise that they're going to put it in, but they're also going to improve the the um, overall backyard, so you don't have stuff flowing down into the wetlands. That's all. Might be hard if they are working outside of our jurisdiction. Well, yeah, of course we can't force them to do it. But why are they even bothered coming to talk to us? Well, <laughs> that's well just we could still encourage the permeable surface. <laughs> yep right all right what's next all right um next we'll go to um annie in her update yep um not a ton of new stuff um still somewhat slow haven't seen any the biggest um applications that we've seen are the um culvert replacement which we're hearing tonight and um the and that's really it. Um, there's nothing much on the horizon. Someone came in the other day um, about putting in a dock on the Merrimack 
um, but that's pretty far off. They still need to hire an environmental consultant. Um, keeping up with site visits, the properties that have open construction are looking good. Um, 106 King is making good progress. They finished the water main completely, so they're going to be looking for a certificate of compliance on that soon. Um, just to close that out, it was such minimal impact. They were There's no restoration or anything we need to worry about. For the water main, no, not at all. Um, all the street work. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so that'll be done. They were said within the next like week or two they wanted to apply for the certificate of compliance. They just need to do bacterial wow. testing. Um, yeah. So, a couple questions, right? So, uh, 106 King owes us their invasives management plan. We're getting it tomorrow. Oh, nice. Yes. Um, the owner was in today and said, I reached out last week to their uh, environmental consultant and he was hoping to be able to get it to us this week, but um, they're getting it to us tomorrow and I'll send it along to the commission once I receive it. Um, they've identified the species that they need to get rid of. They've done most of it already. Um, just in the course of their construction, a lot of their invasives were where the roadway was gonna be. Yeah. Um, so most of it's already done. I think their last, I believe their last invasive is the maple at the top of the street. And they're just waiting for the tree company to have a free time to come and take it down. Which one? The maple at the top. Norway maple? Yeah. Oh. So that's that. And then as far as the 104 yeah. King Street, um, that when I reached out to Damon, he said that that was going to be another week or two. The DEP only recently, I believe, is approving of their plan. So from my understanding, they should have it soon. So he's going to submit his GAN rad to us first, right? Yeah. So we should expect that in about a week. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Good. Got to keep on these people mm -hmm. so we don't forget about it. All right. So thank you. And did you guys go to 38? Oh, that's on yes. the list. Okay. Yes. So we'll go to number three. No, sorry. That's num yeah, number three. three. 38 Benjamin. So um, Annie and I met with Greg Hockmuth and Steve DeHulu and one of his uh, workers were there too. And um, Greg took a look at it. He, he concurred with us that it's pretty bad, pretty bad. Um, so he said this could be a three to five year project, <laughs> requires uh, monitoring it, and uh, recommends using a form of glyphosate on it, uh, not, not spraying it, but kind of plant by plant application. Okay. You know, not widespread sp spraying, but spraying, okay. but you know, low, low spraying. Okay. Um, and he was going to um, send a sample plan that they have done before for other sites uh, to us so that we could put something in writing w from the Dehulus. So that was yesterday. Um, after that, I did speak with uh, the Dehulus, and um, their concern is that we are holding up their building permit, and they'd like to get the building permit sooner than later. Uh, you know, if, if we don't have a plan tonight, I, I wasn't really expecting to get a plan tonight, but if we had a plan tonight, you know, maybe we could have voted on it, but, you know. As sort of an order of condition? Well, no, um, just a, a, a kind of an invasive management plan like we've required of other okay. places. Okay. Um, so we could have voted on it, but, but like I say, um, I didn't really expect it. Um, so now, you know, probably we, we won't get to look at it and then, again, potentially vote on it on our next meeting on August 10th. 
and you know they're unhappy about that so um, you know I kind of know what I think but um, I don't know what the rest of us think about that uh, do we want to uh, give them the ability to get go forward with their with their uh, building permit without having approved a plan or do we want to wait for August 10th they they I thought they might come tonight but they weren't sure they could so but I told told them I would bring this up my preference is to have a plan who's responsible for the plan not being ready up until now well they just we would have just got it that, you know Greg hasn't even sent a sample right right yet. but but we, this is something we've been talking about for months yes we've asked why, them. why 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 is there still not a plan is it our fault is it their fault I mean we asked them to seek professional guidance didn't yeah we, we did and ago. they didn't do that they just kind of ignored it yeah. no they, they didn't ignore they didn't it ignore it they didn't they act did on it. what they thought they could do which was advice from standard operating procedures on knotweed removal you know they 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 have cut all the knotweed twice which you know is useless basically well it helps a little bit but <clears throat> so not a good long-term solution no obviously um so you know i i wouldn't say they haven't done anything you know i i just think they're you know, it, it's the same pushback we have gotten with the other two requests for invasive management plan. It's like a new thing. It's like, why do you care? Uh, what's the big deal? Uh, you don't normally do this, all that kind of stuff. All right. So do we w just want to wait until we get the plan to yes, I would wait until we get the I plan. I prefer to have a plan. Yeah, I mean just given some of the issues that we've had from that. We we site. could we could do a verbal statement in our minutes about what we're looking for in a plan and say okay, uh, you know, put that in the plan and then you can go forward, but you know, probably better is to have an actual written plan yeah. that they sign that they're going to do, yes, and we say exactly. yes, we approve. I would, that's what I would rather have, just given the delicate area that 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 infestation is in. Well, yes, and and I would say this has nothing to do with them. It has more to do with the knotweed being <laughs> so pervasive and so terrible a thing mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. it's like we right. can't treat it lightly right right it's a very delicate area next to Veezy Park right and, and right Delta's next to pond. the pond too you know um, we can't ju especially with I, I don't like herbicides having to be used there but it seems like maybe that's the only way but you know again I don't think we want to be cavalier about it okay so we'll be looking to address that next time, Annie. Hopefully we can put a written plan together and I'll work with them to try to get that done. All right, let's see, let's see, we got that. You already told us about anything upcoming, right? Yeah. Oh, oh, um, just briefly tell the rest of the commissioners about our office moving it's going to be happening sooner rather than later uh, you may have noticed there's new carpets going in in a lot of the offices um, the town clerk just moved into her new office today um, we're going last because we're doing a one-to-one -one switch because Rennie and I are just switching I'm not just moving into an empty office um, it's gonna be a lot of work um, because we do still have a lot of files that need to be gone through. So, yeah, if anyone wants to swing by and help me out, let me know. Um, but, yeah, so I'll just, I'll be in the current highway department building, or office in there, so. And probably the week after next, right? Maybe. Kind of, sort of. Maybe, kind of, sort of. <laughs> yeah, that's about as close as I can get. <laughs> um, 
because they do still have to do this room, obviously. Um, yeah, so oh, okay. yeah, there's I, there's still a lot to do. I think within the next couple weeks is. And our main helpful. problem is our file cabinets. Yeah. So what I'm suggesting is we might have to box up at least four file cabinets worth of files and put them in a temporary location till they can be gone through and dealt with that way because all those ones that are out in the hallway aren't going to be able to stay there. A temporary location in this building? Well, or, or say at VZ Park. Do you have to know. box them or can we just move them into a storage thing in the filing cabinets? You know, moving the file cabinets themselves is very difficult. This takes a dolly. I know, yeah, but, but you can't back a truck Not up. in this it's building. Like, tricky. There's nowhere in this building. There's no, there's no space in this building. No. Okay. We, we could probably put stuff in the basement. They cleared it out. There's plenty of room down there. Do we want, really want to put paper down in that basement? That's what's down there now. Yeah, but it's not good. Temporarily. I don't know, but we'll... well but we'll, if I don't want to put them at VZ, because what if I need them? Right. Yeah, I know. I'm, gonna, I can't, I I'm know. not going to drive well, to VZ when someone find comes out, in. <laughs> find out what the possibility is of putting them down the basement. Okay. You know, those four cabinets. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then we'll try to make a decision, see what makes the most sense. Move right. to open the hearings at 7.32. Second. Okay. We've got a motion and a second to open the hearing portion of the meeting at 7.30. And so we'll do a roll call vote. Fred? Hi. Thanks. Uh, Terry? Aye. Stephanie? Second. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, yes. Okay. Unanimous. All right. So um, our first hearing is for a notice of intent, Groveland notice of intent for a culvert replacement on Uptack Road. Yeah, uh, that's fine. Um, so thank you uh, to the commission for taking the time to meet with us tonight. I see. It's fine. I got You're it. good? I got All right. right here. Um, so we're here to talk about the Uptack Road uh, culvert replacement project uh, here in Groveland. Uh, we're here on behalf of the town of Groveland. Uh, my name's Bob Nikolai. I'm with TC, the engineering consultant uh, on the roadway and structural uh, aspects of this project. Uh, a little bit later, I'll kick it over to Joe with Lucas Environmental for some of the more environmental related items. Um, to give a little history on why we're here, uh, Rebecca actually called us about, you know, a project, uh, a crossing that had been brought to her attention about a, a potential uh, structural concern at this location. So we came out and took a look at the existing culvert and there are shifting stones. It, it's an old loose stone style culvert. Uh, some of the stones have started to shift, especially on the wing walls. Um, so this, with a, a, a crossing like this, rehabilitation is kind of a tough sell. And you end up almost spending as much doing a short-term rehabilitation as you would have just doing a full replacement of the culvert. Um, so at that point, we started working with Rebecca on looking for funding solutions for this project. Um, we were able to apply and be granted a MassWorks grant uh, from the state for this project. Um, it's actually a STRAP grant, which is a subset of MassWorks grants. Um, so that's funding the design, permitting, and construction of this uh, culvert. Uh, so. Once we, the grant was in place, we begun uh, design on the replacement culvert. Uh, the replacement culvert that we are suggesting at this time would be a, uh, a nine foot span uh, by a little bit over uh, eight, close to eight and a half feet uh, in height. Uh, this does increase the hydraulic opening. Uh, the existing span is about six and a half feet. Um, so it is a modest increase to the size of the span. Uh, the proposed structure is a three-sided precast concrete box structure. 
uh, founded on spread footings. Um, the spread footings are embedded about four feet below the stream bed uh, for frost protection. And then there's riprap about two feet uh, placed on top. And then on top of the riprap is another foot of uh, natural stream bed material. So whatever we excavate when we go to remove the existing culvert, we'll stockpile. And then when the new culvert goes back in, we'll put that on top to form a natural stream bed uh, for the crossing. Um, this project meets all of the stream crossing, Massachusetts stream crossing standards, except for the 1.2 bankful width requirement. Um, there's some debate, and I'll let Joe tackle this question about should it even be called Johnson Creek because it's more of a pond? Um, so do the stream crossing standard, you know, the stream crossing standards may not necessarily even apply to a case like this. It's more of a ponded culvert. Um, but be that as it may, we still are expanding from a six and a half to a nine foot opening. Uh, to, to fully meet that 1.2 bank full width, you'd be looking at about a 25 foot structure. Um, and that would, you know, make the project cost prohibitive for the town. It would be over our grant uh, funding amount by that point. Uh, oh, geez. Sorry. No, nice ringtone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so the culvert does need to be uh, constructed in the dry. So we would need to uh, do a control of water system here. Uh, that would include uh, either bulk sand bags or A-frame coffer dams at the upstream and downstream side. Uh, a bypass pipe that would allow the, the, the stream uh, to continue around the site. And then any water that we'd have to dewater out of the construction area in order to get a dry base for our footing. That would go to a settling basin. Uh, right now on our plan, uh, we show um, a filter bag. So it would, uh, the, the sumps would suck the water out. All the water would go to a, a filter bag, be filtered out before anything goes back into the stream. Uh, now the exact design of the Control water system is up to the contractor. It's a means and methods question, but that control water plan would have to come to us for review and approval. Um, most likely they're going to do the filter bag. That seems to be the standard. Uh, the filter bag's surrounded with hay bales and it sits on a bed of stone. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else I was supposed to go over, but I think that was it. And I'll let Joe uh, kind of explain some of the more environmentally sensitive questions. Uh, hello. Uh, for the record, my name is Joe Orzel. I'm a wetland scientist with Lucas Environmental. Um, what I'd like to do tonight is just uh, briefly review the resource areas that are present at the site um, uh, and some of the uh, uh, performance standards uh, that are being met. Uh, first of all, I want to mention that the project is uh, eligible and is being submitted as a limited project um, for the maintenance repair improvement of uh, bridge which existed prior to uh, April 1st 1983 and also as water dependent work uh, it'd be impossible to do uh, this work without um, uh, impacting land underwater um, the resource areas present at the site include uh, land underwater bodies and waterways inland bank uh, fringe of BBW above the bank and bordering lands subject to flooding. Uh, the bank and the BBW were delineated uh, in the field by Lucas Environmental. Uh, the other resource areas are uh, uh, indicated on the site plans. Uh, the proposed work, as was mentioned, is in compliance with the uh, mass stream uh, crossing standards to the maximum extent practicable. Um, uh, given that it's a limited project, uh, it does meet the, the, the requirements. Um, as Bob had mentioned, uh, to meet the full stream crossing uh, bank full width standard uh, would need to be a span of, I think it's at least 25 feet and maybe even more. Um, there is no real stream channel at this location. As you can see from the, from the photos, it's actually you know, a culvert um, over 
uh, pond uh, on either side of the of the culvert. Um, we did not uh, uh, consider this uh, area to have any riverfront area because the pond did not exhibit any uh, riverine characteristics uh, while we were at the site looking at it. Um, so uh, it is not at this point uh, being considered to have riverfront area uh, in, our, in our filing. Uh, Can you explain that a little bit, sorry? Um, What's a riverine characteristic? Well, it, it flow, uh, basically if you're having uh, more, more uh, flow characteristics than, than standing water in a pond characteristics. Okay. And while there's certainly some movement of water through the system, it's not. It's not a typical channel of any okay. kind. Um, it's arbitrary. It's, it's, it's if one if one fills up more than the other, it goes gonna that way. You're going to have some. One, right. You're going to have yeah. some flow, one way or the other. You're gonna equalize. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, Thank you. As far as um, the impacts to our resource areas, let me get the right plan here. Here's your, uh, excuse me, there's the uh, legend on the, on the plan. We've got about 1,705 square feet of uh, temporary impact to land underwater and 1,120 square feet of permanent impact to land underwater. And that's uh, shown by the darker shading in through this area uh, uh, where the existing culvert is and, and immediately uh, to either side of the existing culvert. We'll leave this when we go. The, uh, there's 60 square feet of temporary VVW impact, which will be restored in place, no loss of VVW. Uh, 30 linear feet of temporary bank impact and 115 linear feet of permanent bank impact. And as far as bordering land subject to flooding, uh, there's a net increase in 21 cubic yards of, of flood storage well, with the uh, proposed project. Hmm. Uh, the you know, Notice of Intent filing uh, goes into uh, detail on all the regulatory uh, standards uh, and how they're met. I don't know if you want me to get into any of those at this point, but I, I can if you'd wish. Um, and I think that's about it for what, uh, oh, there's one more thing I want to mention. Uh, the site is within um, estimated habitat. Uh, and priority habitat under natural heritage. Um, we have a letter from natural heritage. This project was submitted to natural heritage. We have a letter stating that it will not impact uh, the actual habitat of an endangered species. In this instance, the uh, species of concern is the Blanding's turtle. Um, but the project will require a turtle protection plan. Okay, good. Uh, so we will need a, an approved turtle protection plan uh, prior to any work uh, commencing. And you do that? We do that, yes. Okay. Uh, and that we just recently had this on a project in Westford. So mass, that was for Mass DOT. The head of Mass DOT permitting actually wrote us a nice protection plan, so we're just going to use mostly that. Okay. Uh, so it's been through, we worked in conjunction with Natural Heritage to draft that. Okay, so. great. And we also have prepared a number of those plans in the past, so we have uh, uh, background yeah, you, in that also. You, your company did the uh, turtle protection plan for the uh, water line work. Yes, we're we're doing the monitoring for the uh, mm -hmm. for the turtle protection plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so that protection plan will probably primarily be monitoring during the construction period. Correct. It would be, I think, you know, prior to any construction, uh, setting up a barrier of some kind, a turtle barrier. Uh, making sure there are no turtles within the area and then monitoring during construction. Also, as part of the uh, mitigation, we are proposing to, uh, in the uh, riprap that's gonna, going to be placed, um, the upper part of the riprap above the water line will have soil added to it and will be seeded. Um, and that will uh, fill any voids that potentially could become a trap uh, for turtles uh, and provide them easier access um, and then across that area. And is there also a seasonal restriction as far as when as that would affect the turtles or not affect the turtles? Well, there's a seasonal time when you would need to uh, conduct the, uh, the sweeps, the monitoring of the sweeps. Okay. Um, 
uh, if you're outside of that time, then, then you wouldn't have to do the sweeps, but I would imagine we would be within the, the, the period. Okay. Uh, yep. So that area is, has been demonstrated to be a problem for turtle crossings on the roadway, and it's been suggested that, there, that there's something done to mitigate the excessive turtle uh, hmm. deaths that occur there. So was that taken into consideration about how this potentially could, you know, while we're doing something to the uh, culvert to, to make it easier and less likely that the turtles are going to be crossing the road? Interesting uh, point. Uh, I was not uh, myself aware that it was a uh, point of concern for turtle crossings. Um, I'm not aware that any uh, mitigation as far as minimizing crossing uh, has been looked at, and I'm not sure if no, it, uh, you yeah, have looked at that. Uh, mm. you know, one way to mm. mitigate that would obviously be to make a structure so long that you could you know, provide dry passage through the structure. Again, something like that. Like a tunnel, you know, turtle tunnel. Yeah. With, with a project like this, then you're looking at, you know, a, a bridge, a 40 foot or so bridge to, to get that dry crossing just because of the water level on both sides. Um, so that would kind of be difficult. And that's um, only going to help if they feel like crossing right around there and right. kind of right. hard to tell a turtle where to, where to cross. Yeah, typically for, for that type of thing, you have some kind of uh, structure well, that funnels, funnel funnels like them the into a certain area. Shoot or something. Exactly. Yeah. So you're saying that it's expensive. That would be part of it. It would be cost prohibitive for the town. And then there are, other, I've seen other where they have the same thing, like almost a chain link fence just to try to funnel the turtles to one area. Yep. You know, but then at a place like this, you're talking about hundreds of feet of chain link fence at each four, at all four quadrants of the structure. Uh, that's one they did out in 119 in Westford. It didn't work out. It didn't. Uh, somebody hit the fence and then now there's a hole in the fence and turtles go through the hole in the fence. So, you know, it's kind of a, a that was kind of a losing gap. How about some extra signage at the site to get people to certainly. slow down? <laughs> that certainly could be done. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There are the signs out there now. We yeah. Can put them to yeah. alert people even ahead of time. Yep. That this may be, you know, watch out, slow down. The signs that are there were put by, um, I believe, were put by uh, private, private um, organizations rather than the town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'd like it if you recommend that we put permanent turtle signs up okay. on both sides of the road. When, when you approach, you know, say a couple hundred feet from the crossing. Well, if that's the toughest requirement, you guys are in for an easy ride. <laughs> <laughs> what's, um, tell me about the 10 year flood thing. What's, what's, uh, there's a little note on, on these things. Uh, yeah. Design 10 year flood elevation 7427. Yeah. So with the, with the, f the flood elevation depth that you look at has to do with your roadway classification. Okay. If you're I-93, you know, you design for uh, the 100 year flood. If you're up tack road, you design for the 10 year flood. Okay. So, you know, that was part of our goal was to make sure that this culvert could contain the design flood and still provide some headroom, you know, in case a 10 year flood comes and you also have a tree that dislodges and goes down river, you still have headroom so that tree's not smashing into the bridge. But no river, so shouldn't be a big deal. Part of it, All yes. Right. Good <laughs> enough, thanks. Yes. And, and just tell us a little bit about the um, the timeline for getting the work done, what your expected timeline is? Mm -hmm. uh, part of it's tied to our MassWorks grant. Uh, so we need to, um, you know, start making progress. We need to probably get it out to bid, you know, by September. So that uh, we're seeing a long lead time on these precast culvert pieces, like anything. Um, so by getting it bid in September, 
getting a contract or a contract, getting that um, the shop drawings approved, the the um, culvert ordered, so that we can hit the uh, dry season next year is the goal. So next May, June. Correct. Right. Yep, that's our timeline right now. Cool. And how long do you think it's going to take? Uh, we're planning to do this as a full closure. Um, similar, uh, this is very similar to the project we recently did in Boxford on 133. If any of you were affected by the detour, sorry. Um, yes. mm -hmm. So this one will be uh, pretty similar in you're looking at about 45 day closure. Um, that one, the 133, we actually got done a couple we a few weeks early. Um, but still 45 days is a good reasonable figure to kind of assume. Yeah. Yeah, it it went really well, uh, but we don't like to promise that on every. <laughs> you never know what you're gonna. And that one, the control of water was by the time we started digging, there was no water, so it was everything was in the dry. So if we can get a drought like we're having this year, maybe that'll help us. But. Oh yeah, let's hope for that. <laughs> so that's what part of the reason why it went so fast was there was no water to control. And if anyone wants to see what the few, uh, final structure would look like, 133 Willow Road at about 89 Willow Road, that's almost identical to what this one would look like, the new structure that was just put in. Okay. All right, so what do we need to do here? I also did want to mention um, that uh, DEP has issued a file number and there were no uh, comments. Okay. At 30-0476. Did we get any, did we get the letter from Natural Heritage, copy of that too? Yep. And did we get all the collection of the tear sheets and green yes. cards? Yes, I already have the digital copies of them. Okay, good, good. All right. Um, any other questions that we've got? Fred, do you have any questions? Um, nope, none whatsoever. Okay, thanks. Um, nobody wants to go take a look at this? Yeah, why don't we? Can we do that on Saturday? We can. Let's go right ahead. We'll be right around the corner. We could walk there. Well, I see it all the time because <laughs> it's gonna not new to so me. It's up to you. <laughs> you and Fred. <laughs> uh, yes, right, we will be close. Um, the only question is, you know, do you want to close out tonight or do you want to wait till August to close it out? Get it out of the way. I mean, would we see anything that would change our... Personally, I don't think so. I mean, this okay. big old culvert there now. Yeah, I do have the pictures up on the board. So. Yeah. Current conditions. Yeah. Culvert itself. Excuse yeah. me, can we ask any questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, Kevin Hubbard from One Up Tech Road, so I live right there. Okay. Um, all the plans, as I see, there's um, uh, the state has changed the flood zone. And mm. it Sir, <laughs> she, he, you just for public comment. Um, and uh, so I went and had a survey done uh, mm -hmm. for the bank to show that I don't fly them. My house is high enough, mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have an issue. Um, the, there's a swale that goes around the whole way on my neighbor and my house up to the point out to the Washington Street and back up Uptack Road okay. that's connected. And very rarely does it have any water in it. It mm -hmm. used to. Uh, when it was a corn farm uh, field. Uh, the work that's done here, uh, when it's done, will not change the elevations of its? Uh, no rise. It's a no, uh, we have to do what's called a no rise analysis as part of this to make sure that we're not affecting any sort of floodplain by doing this uh, project. Will it cause any more water to come through that No. And the second question, uh, during construction, mm -hmm. uh, the flow will be maintained, so no backflow will, again, mm -hmm. cause any flooding in mm -hmm. the general area. 
Yeah, we typically set our coffer dam at a level, and this will be part of the control of water plan that the contractor will submit um, that makes sure that, you know, whatever elevation they're setting their coffer dam at won't flood people upstream. You know, usually we set that at whatever the design flood is. So here would be a 10-year flood. So if your house doesn't flood during the 10-year storm, it, there's no chance it would flood during construction because we make sure there's a spillway where if it gets to that level, you know, it goes over the spill. the plumbing at all in any way, like what, what's happening? I mean, I don't really understand all this. So, like, I just want to make sure that, I mean, we spent uh, a lot of money to have somebody come out and survey our land and make mm -hmm. sure that we were not really in that part of the flood zone so that we didn't have to play, pay that flood insurance. Right. So we just want to make sure that that's maintained. And mm -hmm. I guess As part of the no-rise analysis, it has to, or else we... So, so you're not changing anything? Not really. I mean, there, in there's, terms no of net, there's no net change. At the end of the day, the, the, the two ponds are going to equilibrate as, mm -hmm. as they did before. But there used to be a lot more flow through there and a lot more water through there, which I don't really understand why there isn't as much now. Well, some of it depends upon what comes down from Haverhill mm -hmm. and flows through Johnson's Pond. Um, we've done a lot of work to try to... Uh, prevent the, uh, let's say, excessive flow from Johnson's Pond. And in times of drought, like now, it slows way down. And it actually slows down all the way down Johnson's Creek, all the way till it gets to, to the Merrimack. Um, but this year, we haven't uh, been intense about keeping the levels high, the highest point they can be on Johnson's Pond because it causes other problems for a couple of houses that are on Johnson's Pond, um, kind of gets into their backyard a little more than they prefer. So kind of where it is now seems to be maybe about the best, even though it does affect the, you know, the it's weeds that are in there, yeah, so. Yeah, oh, I know, I know. It's un very unfortunate, you know, the, the, those lilies take over and they're impossible to get rid of without dredging. We, we, th that, that pond on the, from your house on the other side was dredged about 40 years ago. They cleaned it out, but you see what happens with it. I would say a lot of it is maybe two feet deep at most, you know. And what you may have seen before, there were beaver issues on the far side of Johnson's Pond, and those are less of an issue now. So you might not be seeing as many uh, fluctuations because of the beaver dams letting go and stuff. So. There's a number of things. I mean, it's truthfully been better for our property because we don't get that swale around our house anymore. And I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but but it's I not, also miss Meadow Pond and being. Yeah, it's not as pretty to look at, unfortunately. Yeah. To, to enjoy. Out there. This won't cause any. No change. Change in the flood elevations. We want you to say there's going to be a change. We want you to say it's going to be look like a beautiful pond again. <laughs> Don't want to make promises. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so what do we need to do? Um, okay, so if we don't have any other questions from anyone else, do um, you, you want to make a motion, Stephanie? Or do you want to wait until next month? I'm not going to look at it. So don't look at me. What do you think? I'm so familiar okay. with it. All right. Then motion to accept the plans as presented and for issue, uh, yeah. It, yeah. and issue a the Fred issue the permits and issue the permits um, for the new culvert on Uptech Road. Second. Second. No. Fred seconded it. Oh. Deep Terry. <laughs> he did not. <laughs> Once. Any any other final comments? Any other discussion on the motion? So we're voting to approve the project as submitted. Really, the only 
change or request the two requests we've had is to make sure to understand and I think we do that the level isn't going to be affected sure and then if you can come up with some mitigation through signage recommendations or whatever for mm -hmm. tur the turtle crossing sure easy enough and we'll just put those things in the permit Annie could I see a copy of the letter too from Natural Heritage, Annie, when you have time to send it? Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right. It's are their, we ready? It's their basic conditional notation oh, okay. letter. Okay. It's okay. no different than okay. the other you know, ones. When they, when they approve of something, yeah. they don't say too okay. much, which is crazy, but you know. I'm interested in it. Oh, you're the best. Thanks. All right. So we'll take a vote then. Fred? Aye. Terry? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Mike? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you for coming. I thought those questions were really interesting. Thank you. They're right there. I mean, <laughs> this is like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming. <laughs> okay. Our next hearing is for 8 Merrimack River Road. This is a Groveland RDA. So, Annie, what is this? Um, 8 Merrimack River Road, it is tree removal along the Merrimack. Um, Michael Bacher is here, the homeowner. Um, oh, okay. To go over it. Is this um, the tree removal? This is a new one. He was, you were here in the I fall? In the yep. Uh, this is uh, a smaller tree that's broken free at the base and is leaning, it's snagged at the top. It is uh, leaning over the ramp uh, to my dock currently. That doesn't oh. sound good. I walk under it. Oh, that sounds bad. To get out. It, it is pretty <laughs> securely snagged. Um, but it, I think it is dangerous. And uh, the one picture it's is the crooked. base. I'm sorry. I think it's upside down. Yes, this is the base. I struggled so much getting to this work. This is the base. And then this and is I, the dock with it overhanging. Is that an oak tree? I think it's an ash. There's, yeah, uh, there's one that looks like an ash. Yeah, I think it's that an ad. That to make more sense next to the river. Mm -hmm. I, I do have a short video that was taken in the wind, and you can see that the base is broken free. It, it moves with the wind. Ooh. Why don't you just tell me you can cut the tree down? <laughs> well, you were going to have a tree service ticket. This is a different, this is a different one. Have, I, I contacted okay. KMA. Um, okay, cool. I, I enjoy a chainsaw as much as anybody. But with it snagged at top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't. Oh, Widowmaker, isn't it? I'm not going to. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm not that good. So did it, how did it end up that way? Did, is it a dead tree or was it dying or or, or did it The ash, it looks like it's. it's I, think it's. I think it's ill. It isn't dead. There are some live leaves on it still. Yep, yep. Um, it, it's growing at the base uh, w with another tree. There are two trees. And I think it was crowded out. Uh, yeah. um, and plus, you know, it's probably infected like many of the ash trees yeah, are. Yeah, right, right. So it's a perfectly natural thing. This was no, no nothing due to somebody's, somebody's uh, mistake or something. Or, or just that they didn't like trees. Correct. I didn't push it. No. I <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, cheapers. So, um, KMA, they're okay with coming in and respecting the river and everything else. How are they going to take it down? Are um, they going to have to bring a crane in? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, they did not say anything about waiting for the ground to freeze. Okay. I, I've worked with them before, and they're, they're quite knowledgeable about the shoreline. Yep. Um, I think they're going to... Um, uh, tie it and then section it. Oh, okay. So crane with a cable and just chop off chunks of it? Chop or? off a piece of it, yeah. yeah. 
that makes sense, Annie. You've been there. Yep. Yep. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion? Any other questions? Well, we can, if you make a motion, we can discuss the motion. Motion to issue a permit for, is it two trees then? I think, wasn't there a third tree that was? Uh, That's a different well, property. No, it's just a single tree. Just one tree. Yeah. Okay. There are some branches at the top that are also snag more widow makers that I was just going to have KMA see if they could pull down. Yeah. Oh, okay. Broken and, and hanging. Okay. So motion to issue a permit for tree removal at 8 Merrimack River Road. Second. Any, any further discussion or questions? What's your timing-ish? This season. So before November? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I've already got a quote. You know, Kevin said, let me know when you've got the permit in hand and we'll get it on the schedule. All right. All right. We'll take a vote then. Fred? Aye. Terry? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Mike? Yes. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Did I know that you had the Clean River Project. Did you want to mention that at all? I know you mentioned it at the Board sure. of Selectmen meeting. I love talking about the Clean yeah. River yeah, Project. Yeah, give us, so, give us a two-minute update. If sure. You the clean, I actually have a, a ramp yeah, permit I was that I need to, <laughs> to drop with Ann so uh, they can use the ramp. Um, uh, the first public date is the 30th of this month. Uh, we've got pretty good turnout already. You might have seen some flyers, and I can bring some. I mean, I have more in the car. Okay, that'd be great. Um, and we'll have two weeks, one starting the 30th, and then the following week. Then we skip a week, and then uh, August 13th, and the following week. We have to work the low tide. We have to have morning low tides. So we'll work out of the pines. Uh, we've got Chesterton signed up with a group. Uh, we've got the Boy Scouts signed up for a group during the week. Uh, we have the Haverhill Crew Club, uh, maybe. Rowing Club is a maybe, but they're definitely interested. Um, and we'll be down. We'll have a canopy tent and some education materi educational material. Uh, we'll uh, brief people on safety, provide them with uh, garbage bags and pickers, um, and we'll take them to different points along the shoreline and let them walk the shoreline and, and pick up the trash. Um, we do have moorings in place. We're going to put a floating boom up uh, on the other side of the bridge. That will be in place for the duration, and that will catch any floating debris uh, that's coming. That will all be removed, and we'll report on our findings uh, in tonnage of removal um, and special counts for uh, things like hypodermic needles and other dangerous elements that we take out of the river. You're amazing. You can make a run to... Uh one of the salvage yards in, in Haverhill, turn some of that metal into some money. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I know that they do separate the recyclables uh, when they take it back to the yard. Um, I, I volunteer with them. I've been you know volunteering occasionally with them, and I serve on the board now with them for, uh, I've been volunteering for two or three years, three years, and I've been on the board for just coming up on a year. So they do good work. Yes. Um, we will be back next year to see if we can find uh, funding for uh, a contract to keep the river clean here on the Groveland shorelines next year. Awesome. Did, did, did you get a grant to do this year's work? Yes. Yeah. This is so, funded by a grant. So that's nice because I know that in the past, Groveland really hasn't been able to help out with any, right. you know, so... I would say keep asking. Doesn't hurt to ask. No, right. <laughs> and I think can we're we going to show. Can we get a link on our website to this for, you know, a few weeks, obviously not a permanent one. Oh, yeah. I, I hate seeing stuff on the Groven website that was from like two years ago and nobody's taken it down. Oh, we have a new website, yeah, though. Yes, I was going to say with our new website, we are still, uh, employees aren't yet able to edit the website. So it will just take me a little, I have yeah, to go convince through the, somebody to yeah, okay. help me. <laughs> but I think Rebecca was here for when he, when he presented at Board of Selectmen, so. Oh, okay. 
Yes. So she's already she's aware of it. Yeah, oh, yeah, Rebecca has helped us a number yeah, of yeah. ways. We've been in contact with Rebecca from the very beginning. Yeah. She got us on the selectman agenda and has helped with a lot of administrative permits for the pines and such. Excellent. Very helpful. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Our next hearing is for um, north of Rocky Woods right of way. RDA, GRDA. This is for National Grid, correct? Yes, I believe so. Were you guys able to see a map of the project? I just printed out some there. Uh, I think Thank some. I saw that in my email, right? Here I can. There's this whole thing in there. Yeah, I printed, I printed these out of. Oh, great, great. Until now, let go to waste. <laughs> oh, good. That's just the entirety of the map that uh, is posted up there. Thank you. Yeah, pull it right up. Great. So I can give a quick overview of the project, if that's okay. Sure. So my name is Kellen Consowitz. I'm filling in for my coworker, Jim Bulldock, who submitted the RDA to you guys. And this is on behalf of uh, New England Power, uh, aka also known as National Grid. Um, so the proposed project, it's on the 2405 distribution line, and it's structure 8-1, as you see there. And uh, it is located within a vernal pool, which is located within... Uh, a greater bordering vegetated wetland. And so the purpose of the project is to move a jumper loop or connector wire from the top of a cross arm to below the cross arm. And uh, the plan is for National Grid crews to just access the structure by foot. There is some vegetation surrounding it, so there will be some vegetation maintenance that's required, but uh, not expecting to bring in any machinery or cause any sort of tracking or damage um, to the resource area. Uh, so this is considered maintenance under the Wetland Protection Act, but it's my understanding that the uh, Groveland bylaw, wetlands bylaw doesn't, uh, what's the word? Obs not observe maintenance, but yeah, you, you, like to, you like project recognized, there you go. <laughs> Thank right. you. We like to know about it at yeah. least. Absolutely. So that's that's the reason for this RDA here. Um, we are also located within uh, estimated habitat for rare state species uh, for Blanding's turtle and also blue spotted salamander. And this is co covered under uh, an existing operation and maintenance plan that National Grid has with uh, natural heritage. And uh, essentially for Blanding's turtles, um, crews are uh, we'll keep an eye out for Blanding's turtles as well as salamanders. And it's part of uh, their understanding that they're trained and they know uh, what endangered species are in the area for before they conduct the work. Have you been out there recently or not at all? I have not myself. My coworker Jim uh, delineated these resources. So he's out there to pick out the boundary of the vernal pool. There's still water there? I went out earlier. I don't think so with the lack of rain we've been getting. I <laughs> I went out earlier today. I took this picture. Good luck to them with all the poison ivy. Um, I only went so far. But you could definitely tell it dipped down. I, I don't you think didn't it would have been. You didn't to see if there was water. No, because I You just value. didn't feel like scratching your legs for the rest of your life. I'm <laughs> hyper allergic too, so I am. Well, I'm allergic as well. <laughs> so <laughs> it's really bad. Understood. Where do you... Where do you access it from? Oh, so the access is from Rocky w Woods Road, which mm -hmm. is right off of uh, King Street. King Street. Ah. Okay, so it's down yeah, that sorry. Okay. Enough. Just right at the beginning. I right over there by, uh, okay. Yeah, there's like an existing right utility of right away that goes right over okay. King Street. And so okay. the access you can see on the figure is uh, just okay. from, it's uh, Rocky Woods Road. Yeah. So going in by foot. No machinery. Doing some vegetation maintenance, whatever that means. 
Yep. Know, so it's just uh, there's some existing vegetation around the pole and that needs to be cut. The pole. I'd imagine some bittersweet and okay, gotcha. some other invasives, but they're just going to maintain that. Okay. So they're able to climb the structure and then relocate the uh, the wire that they need to. Okay. So all overhead work. There's no you know ground disturbance proposed. Okay, and as long no as it's machinery, not no correct, right? As long as it's not spring, we don't have to worry about the vernal pool. Yeah, when are they going to do this? Uh, my understanding is within the next two months, but I can certainly confirm that. And we just want to make sure it's out of our yeah seasonal restriction. Right, period. absolutely. And do we want to get a notice a few days ahead of time when they're headed in? Yeah, you know that's typically what we would say in our permit. Yeah, that's right. something I'm sure National Grid can accommodate. It's your own crew, so you have a little bit of control. Yeah, I, we're a consultant to National Grid, so uh, we're. But in I mean, there it's, it's their own crew. Exactly. Yeah, it's an in-house so crew. So it's not like they have some contractor who may flake out a week ahead of time and exactly. move it back a month. It's they're just going to do it when they're going to do it. Exactly. All Such right. a small project like this, it'll just be an in-house crew. Okay. Any other questions? Fred, do you have any questions? Nope, I'm good. Okay, thank you. So with the, sorry, so with the turtles and the salamanders, do you, there's, we just have to know that they're there? Correct, yeah. It's part of the existing operation and maintenance plan the National Grid has with Natural Heritage that um, Natural Heritage understands that National Grid has to conduct maintenance and emergency work within uh, priority and estimated habitat. So it's, it's, I don't want to say assumed, but they understand that National Grid properly trains their employees to know what species are in the area. And not to, to harass or, them. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So they, they don't make you file for permission for Correct. every job. for every basically. maintenance project. They kind of have a blanket permit. Exactly. You don't have to have right. a letter issued or anything. Yeah. Right. Or it was maybe in the beginning when it was built or something. Yes. Correct, because yeah. And we've even called them, too, and they've they've mentioned, like, we have an existing operation maintenance plan that, <laughs> so you know, as long as that's complied with, that's the purpose. <laughs> and nothing that you do would disturb them. Like, what kind of, what, so you're moving one of those big giant wires. What kind of equipment does that require? Yeah, so it's not, I believe it's just going to be by hand. I And by be, hand, just with, uh, like a tool So, yeah, it's, it's not an electrical wire okay. from, from the filing. And, again, I apologize. I'm filling in for my coworker here. No, I appreciate this. Here. Thank you very but, much. But uh, in the filing, it is a jumper loop slash connector wire. Okay. So I don't believe it's an actual overhead electrical wire. They just have wire, to climb. Okay. Yeah, that in order to accommodate probably space for some okay. overhead wires, they have to move this jumper wire from okay. above the cross arm to below. Very cool. Thank you. Jumper loop. Jumper loop. From the top of the cross Yeah, arm. jumper loop slash connector wire. Cross arm. <laughs> that should be in the, the uh, RDA that we submitted to yeah, for more official yeah. language than what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right, are we ready for a motion here? Motion to issue a permit for the uh, National Grid to uh, perform maintenance on their equipment north of Rocky Woods. Second. Any further discussion on the motion? Questions? All right, seeing none, hearing none, then we'll take a vote. Um, Fred. Aye. Terry. Aye. Stephanie. Aye. Mike, yes. Unanimous approval. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. I <laughs> appreciate you. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Our last hearing is number four, <coughs> six Merrimack River Road, Groveland Notice of Intent. No. Would anyone like a copy of what Annie has up there? I have my surveyor print out a couple for you if you'd like. Yes. Copy. I didn't print them out one because you said you were bringing yeah, some. Yeah. We have that. 
No, he's got some. Oh, good. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Well, those are big and signed and everything. Right, let's see. Ah. Ah, okay. You're going to want this back, right? I know. I got some reason. Wow. Okay. Um, I like it. Uh, and for the record, uh, my name is Greg Wick, 6 Merrimack River Road. Um, we met last month as a informal conversation about this project, which I had started two years ago. I think COVID put a pause on it. Um, at that time, I had a delineation done by DeRose Environmental Services, and I had the land surveyed. Um, based on our last meeting, we had a follow-up site visit. I know you came out to take a look at it. Um, since then, I've talked to my builder. Um, He's, he's lined up and ready to go. He was going to be here tonight. He threw his back out yesterday. So oh, um, I'm filling in for him. Hopefully I can answer any questions you might have had for him. Um, that's the proposed garage in its spot. That's a 32 by 28, which isn't final, but that's, I think, is the largest I could go without having it look too obtuse and have it still fit into that perimeter. Mm -hmm. um, and it could possibly shift, you know, it could tilt one way or the other at the end if we, if we had to, but that's where it will potentially fit. Um, the, as you can see on there, <clears throat> the erosion control is listed on there. Um, Rick Anderson, my builder, said the only equipment he's going to be bringing in is a, a mini excavator just for the foundation work. Um, it would just be to dig a four-foot trench. Um, he can remove the material from the site to eliminate any potential runoff, so he can remove that while we're doing the dig out and then bring that back into backfill, which will follow up with, with loom and seed and plant around that area. Um, I don't know if you have any questions on the position or um, when, when you came out to the site visit, we had talked about maybe putting it right where the shed is or I forget the other gentleman's name who came out with you. Bill, yeah. Bill, yeah. Bringing it where it is now. And I mm. think that does make more sense. It mm -hmm. can kind of tuck back farther. Mm -hmm. um, So the whole thing's within the no build zone, right? Correct. So why should we approve this? Well, that is the question. Is there any other place to put it? Well, only where the shed was, but with the positioning. Well, even that's totally within the. Mm -hmm. That's still within that zone. In the no build zone. Weren't we going to um, find out about permits on that shed? Wasn't that part of the. Yeah, and I wasn't able to find anything. Finding? It went in, Greg told me it went in when the pool went in, and I looked for the. And the pool had been outside of jurisdiction from this wetland and the <laughs> river. <laughs> so the pool was kind of. The pool didn't have to come in front of us because it wasn't jurisdictional. When was that? It was 99, 2000. I ran into the old owners. Yeah, the previous owner. Yep, yep. So he kind of slipped that shed in then, huh? <laughs> well, I guess there is that question. Why not put it right where that shed is. That at least puts it a little bit further away because the resource area dips down pretty drastically. If we can move it, we can definitely move it back closer to the shed. Um. I mean, when Bill and I were out there, yep. This, I mean, the space is pretty flat. There's already an existing shed. But that's going. Correct. So it's not an issue. Right. I mean, I, I know it's not an issue, but this. 
but it's being replaced with something that's three times the size, a little bit more, mm. and much, much closer. It's within five feet of the no disturb zone. And, and, and at least putting it by the, by the shed, it puts it, it more like 50 feet. Yeah. So you're talking, Terry, about I'm talking about shifting, shifting quite it a to bit the left, to the left, over to all, you know, and then part of it would be out of the 75 foot. Maybe. I mean, you know, there's a there's there's a diff, there's a difference between it being yeah. I guess I guess in, in an ideal world you get as much of it out of the 75 as possible, um, but at least it would not be anywhere near as close as the uh, as it is to the to the no disturb zone but when you're moving it further this way it's closer to the road to the road so the road's the other way I'm moving right? it here the roads the roads here right so I'm moving it here that's I the, know but that's the no dis that's the no disturb correct that tails way down there so you're at least putting it even if it's even if it's mostly within the no build, which I'm not crazy about in the first place, mm -hmm. it's at least much, much closer to the to the seventy five feet mm -hmm. than than the twenty five feet. This mm -hmm. is this is right there. I know, I see. And do you mind pointing which area where's the no disturb that the no disturb is here. Twenty five foot no disturb. 75 foot no build and then the 100 foot yeah yeah but but this is i mean this is right, it's the, right up the, the, the nice thing about this area is i mean it's still within the 75 foot yeah. I wish I had taken most photos. of it at least yeah. mm. but it's it's at least you could make it so it's 50 feet from the resource area and not 25 feet right or 30 feet this is like 30 feet and then the only issue i have Closer is the drive. This is the driveway here already. Right. So I have to tuck it in there without. Then it's accessing the garage itself, turn it into it. So I can move it as close as I can to the shed. But then with the driveway here, I can't really cross over that, or else I won't be able to access in. And what's going on over here? I think it says paved. That's just, that's the driveway. It's the driveway off Merrimack River Road. No, Merrick River is over here. The road, though, right? No, this is just our driveway. So there's the. I know, this right? The, but this, this, is, line, right? this is the road here. You pull in over here, right? Roads here. Yeah. Pull in right here, paved, and then the driveway comes out here. I thought I've got a garage underneath here. Okay. So this is all driveway, and then the property line stops here. There isn't room over here to put anything with. Oh, okay. So you start then you start having setbacks from correct from here, and it has to be what 15, 15 feet. 15 feet. Okay, but that's still. And so isn't this pond a there. retention pond? The pond's a retention pond over here, right? Yes. The river's on the other side of the house. Correct. Where the deck is. Yep. So this is your just driveway gets wider and wider, so you can curl around in here. Correct. What are you going to do? Are you are you going to keep that garage also? Keep the garage. Yeah. So you're going to have like how big is this? Is this four cars? Two. Two. Yeah, just two car. I put a big one. We can shrink it down. I wanted to see if what would fit. Yeah. But I can definitely make it smaller. Yeah. I mean, what I'd like to see, what I'd like to see is shift it over here as much as possible. Mm -hmm. Twist it as much as possible. Yep. Um, and and shrunk all all three of those things. That's what I'd like to see. I'm just one out of yeah. six. Okay. <laughs> so. Um, we need to get we need to get a seventh. <laughs> it took me months to get a fifth zoning board member. Yeah. 
Yeah, the shed spot, yeah, it's really the only spot on the property to put a garage mm -hmm. around near the shed. Mm -hmm. Nothing over by the farther on the driveway. Um, I'm not crazy about the whole thing, but I understand you want a garage. And if, if you can work with us to shrink it, shift it, mm -hmm. rotate it a little bit, then I'll come around. Okay. Fair enough. I could go back to my surveyor and just have him. <clears throat> He's got this on a digital screen. We can play around with size. Dimension shift. Yeah, it, it's just pop little, it in there. little rectangles. A little smaller, little angled, little shift. So as close to the footprint of the existing shed as possible. Yeah, yeah, and and away as much as possible. Well, it's but just that when Bill and I were there, Bill thought that this. I, didn't Bill talk about this spot being maybe slightly better than this corner over here where the shed is? He thought so. Why? Because just the location further away from the... But he's talking about, he said, that, that, that's not the Conservation Commission talking, that's the car, car parking guy <laughs> talking. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yes, functionality, yes, it works better. Functionality, there. but also further away from... Yeah, the fill, fill in all those wetlands. <laughs> Bring <laughs> them all up flat. So, so <laughs> it, again, here's my question. The question that I would have dear board members is why are we permitting something to be built in the no build zone, zone okay at all yeah so i mean there's got to be a doggone good reason for this um and i'm not really hearing that other than it'd be nice to have another garage yeah just with our kids in the cars and <clears throat> snow plow in the winter moving cars around and storage no, we understand the yeah, desire. Right. That that is that is without question. <clears throat> you know, so I don't I don't know. <laughs> well, how about we send him back, bring in a revised plan, and and then or or are you saying that you don't want to do it at all? Well, he's one vote though. Yeah, right. But again, that's why there's seven seven spots on the commission, and and not everybody always agrees. And right, if you if you could convince other people to, I mean, all we need is a majority, so um, that's fine. I, I don't have any problem yeah. with that. Um, I guess, like I say, <clears throat> I'd like to, you, you know, if if we come back with a revised plan, just some little further little explanation of why maybe this place is not um, out of the 75 foot buffer completely, but you know, um, it is a better or best position on the property to be able to put it. You know, and then you've shrunk the size down. I know. will say the rest of the front yard is their septic system, so they can't put this. Yeah. Is, they oh, can't that's put not a, that. That's in this. Where it says lot four, Terry, just like that yeah, area. Beautiful spot where you could just where put you it could on the other very side easily or, put it say, somewhere. Look, no issues here exactly. at all. Exactly. Yeah. There's okay. that's that's their septic system. All the right. Board of Health well, would be very unhappy with us. That takes please. away my argument to move it over <laughs> there. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So I would say. Come back next month, smaller, shifted, and give another shot. Otherwise, I don't think you have the votes. Yeah, I didn't realize no bill zone was that in our last informal conversation. I didn't realize that was um, no build is no build is pretty much no build, and and we don't we don't let people building new stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's I different. mean, if you want to put a house there, we'd say no. That's no, no bill. bill. This is too close to the existing wetlands on the other side. I will remind the commission about um, Main Street, the new house that's going at the corner of Savory Lane. We did allow a new house to be built, and most oh. of that driveway was within, was between 50 and 75 feet. The driveway. The driveway. It's okay. I don't think that covers. Typically, we, we treated that differently than. 
I mean, this is a good point that if this is storing vehicles that could potentially be leaking things yeah. into the... That's true, too. <laughs> anyway, run while you can. <laughs> yep. And we'll see you next month. Sounds good. Thanks for the maps. No problem. Do you want to hold on to these for the next uh, time? I don't, we don't need all of them. Keep working. Yeah. In fact, if they're going to be different, we don't need many right. at Sorry. all. Right. Um, take that, thank you. Yeah, so on, on that one you referred to, that was the driveway. I recall that one, right? Oh, thank you. I mean, even with driveways, I'd prefer not to put them in the. I mean, could we but have a discussion about whether it was going to be pervious, impervious pavement? What, for the. For this, even? Would that be. But if it's within it's the no pavement, build. and it's all. Well, I mean, there is a lot of pavement here off of the area that's. Because this isn't paved already. Yeah. It's, this is this paved. This is paved. So this will be another area. Of no, just this part. Oh, this whole part. This, uh, this is no, all. No, this is, this is the. So it's, it's just this. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's gotcha. not all that much, and right. it's blocked. Yeah. It's yeah. blocked yeah. by the garage. So okay. that's not. That, I wouldn't worry all about right. that at all. Okay. So I got to be on the road at 3:30 tomorrow morning. Can we close okay. this meeting? Well, first of all, we need to can do this. So Well, we didn't open this, did we? Yeah, we did. Or Yeah, we so we don't have any motions or anything. No, but I got to make a motion to continue it. Second. <laughs> <laughs> what is he? Um, yeah, so the motion is to continue the hearing on Sick Mer Merrimack River Road until uh, August 10th. Fred? Yes. Okay. So you second it? She did. Yes. Second again. All right. Thank you. Fred? Aye. Thanks. Terry? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Mike? Yes. Okay. Now make a motion to close the hearing portion of the meeting at 8.37 p.m. Second. Fred? Second. Yeah. <laughs> Terry yeah. beat you, Fred. Yeah, I mean, uh, on that one. Uh, um, yeah, so Terry, yes. Uh, Stephanie? Aye. Mike, yes. And Fred, yes. Unanimous. Okay, so... We're outside of that. So, Terry, you know, if you need to leave, you can leave because unless we have a quorum. We don't have, we don't have any more votes, I don't think. Just to close the meeting. No, we did. No, we closed, no, we the, closed hearing. the hearing closed portion. The I, I'm not sure. i got to look at my notes to see if there's anything else. I think so. Let me just check. Let me see. I think we did cover everything. VC Park. Yeah, we got that. We got those four. Nobody has any other further I, I, other items to discuss. Any? Yo. Well, I mean, not that uh, Terry needs to be here for. I just want to talk about something else. Thank okay. you, Terry. Thank you guys. Bye. Drive careful. Huh? Drive careful. Oh yeah. Tomorrow, at three thirty in the morning. Are we gonna have a? Is the town gonna have a Groveland Day table? Yes. So can VZ horn in on that a little bit? VZ, could VZ have should its just own do their own table. Well, VZ... Yeah, they should just do their own table. Yeah, why don't we just have our own table? Yeah, it's just staffing. Because if we have a town table, it's going to be more focused towards getting people onto boards. Are we going to have a conservation table? I'm one person, so no, because <laughs> I have to do the whole department, not just conservation. Are you going to be there? Yep, I'm oh. gonna also be there for the master steering committee. So, ooh, if wow, recreation and trails. <laughs> I am again one person. Well, so this is what I was thinking is. Who was? Rebecca. I don't know. We could. Oh, yeah. I was gonna do one for the department because I have. All everything that I need to do for it. 
so oh. I don't know. That she didn't mention that probably to me. Be, actually, okay. So, so I was gonna mostly be there for the well, I was so gonna be there for mostly the master plan and then just the department and trying yes. to get people. And my on the point board. is because someone doesn't want to be on the zoning board. Trail anymore. maps. That is very important. Yeah. <laughs> you were having four different <laughs> to get you off the zoning board? <laughs> no. <laughs> just to, to get people on the boards. Okay. Yes. So I will remove my foot from my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, allow you to go back to what you were doing. No, we were talking about that. Yeah, this is what we're talking about. This was my main question because it came up at the Friends of Easy meeting today also on whether the Friends have to have their own table. They do, when they have to man it themselves. Or woman it. Okay. But. So we'll have, so how does it work? Is the table like this? You'll have to get in contact with Lisa Chandler. She's the Groveland Day Committee Chair. I'm not sure the details of... What would the commission have at the... Would we have trail maps? I mean, I guess that's my point is I want to have trail maps out. If the Friends of VZ, if the friends of VZ are there, I would think we would both have trail maps because why not? Okay. Um, but, yeah, it's probably just going to be a big table with a Can bunch we have of some... It's September. Can we have some printed like some nice maps made of well, we, town properties we by the friends of easy or the conservation commission i mean concom i guess we only have a couple of brochures oh well we can can we have some made for what else would the concom have well we, right. we could have all our you know we could have all our information. oh what's an rda yeah yeah all that yeah that's stuff. great actually Right. Maybe put out some information about invasive species. Yeah, right. You could focus on that. Okay. We could, I mean, there's a lot of things we could do if we really want to do it. What's an RDA stuff? Invasives. Invasives. Yeah, so we can Wetlands. talk. Wetlands. Yeah. Maybe you could get natural heritage information. We can talk about it at our next meeting, but, you know, the specifics. If we are going to do it, who's going to be there and when and everything else, I can be right? there on September 10th. As far as I know, I'm off that day. So we just need to contact Lisa Chandler and say, you know, we'd like to have a table there. I don't know who she is. She's just the, is she, does she work for the town? No, mm -hmm. she's somebody who runs Groveland Day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Annie could do that, right? Can you just contact her and at least... Say we want to have a conservation commission table. So the conservation commission wants its own table. Yeah. I think okay. So I'm not gonna be able to man that table. No, I mean, you don't need. Okay. To. We'll figure that part out. Is the dog park gonna be done by then? Maybe. <laughs> I doubt it. It's supposed to be done. Okay. Oh yes, You're please. Thank you. you yeah, that would be great. Thank you so much, Mike. Thank you. Thanks. Are you still in session? Are you? Yeah, we are. Oh, kind of, yeah. No problem. That's no problem. Um, okay, good. So, any? Did you have anything else, Jason? Anything else for us? Maybe. Oh. You get you for the Groveland days. You don't get a table. Oh, is it not a table? You get a ground area. So we have to supply the table. I have a table. And, yeah, we got them at VZ. I recommend a canopy. Yeah, I got a canopy too. Oh, you do? Okay, because yep. I would have a tent, not a canopy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's good. You need to contact Lisa. Table. So you can talk to the friends of VZ and see if they want to share the uh, our okay. space or something, you know. Okay. What I mean? Yep, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. I'm excited now. No, that'll be good. Um any any other things to discuss? Any other items to discuss on your end, Fred? I guess not. No, I'm good over here. Right. Fred, you know, you did get reappointed. Hey. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you that I assumed you knew, but um, yeah, yes. Um, I got a, uh, I got oh, you an got, email. You got a letter, yes, yes. Yep. Okay, good. 
that's right. All right. So I think we can, um, our next meeting is August 10th, 7 p.m. here at Town Hall. And uh, I will make a motion to adjourn the meeting at 8.44 p.m. Second. Okay, we'll take a vote. Fred? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Mike? Yes. Okay, so we are hereby adjourned. Thank you.